fans i de la distinció de la vostra dignitat. Director, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, students, friends, I am deeply honored that the trustees of Ravida Indigiti University have decided to make me a member of their alumni, indeed a member of their family. I am especially grateful to Elizabeth Russell and Anthony Pym for proposing me as a recipient of this honor. Today is the eighth anniversary of the death of my mother, Shivani Chakrabutti, who was an intellectual in her own right, receiving an MA in Bengali literature from the University of Calcutta in 1937, at the age of 24. My father, Dr. Parishkan Dutakrabutti, a village boy, worked with Rutherford at Cambridge on radiology in the late 20s, was created a civil surgeon by the British, but destroyed his brilliant career with no hesitation at all when asked to give false evidence in a rape trial. I had no doubt at all that it is my parents who nurtured in me the qualities that you have decided to acknowledge today. Gender and translation, for they are routinely used to achieve utopia, various kinds of alibis, to achieve utopia and to close off access to suborganization. In order to establish the same system of exchange all over the world, the bottom line of globalization, the barriers between individual national economies and international capital have to be removed. When this happens, states lose their individual and idiosyncratic constitutional particularities in history and become recoded as agents or managers for managing the interests of global capital, the managerial state. It becomes our tool for abstraction in many forms and shapes. On the level of the loosely held assumptions and presuppositions which English-speaking peoples have been calling culture for 200 years, change is incessant. But as they change, these unwitting presuppositions become belief systems, organized suppositions. Rituals coalesce to match, support, and advance beliefs and suppositions. But these presuppositions also give us the wherewithal to change our world, to innovate and create. Most people believe, even, or perhaps particularly, when they're being cultural relativists, that creation and innovation is their own cultural secret, whereas others are only determined by their cultures. I have very good friends who are Indianists, very politically radical and so on. Anything I do, they say, oh yes, Indians get up early in the morning. But if we aspire to a, to a global utopia, we must not only fight the habit of thinking creation and innovation is our own cultural secret. We must also shake the habit of thinking that our version of computing gender is the world's. And in fact, even ignore our own sense of gender unless we are specifically speaking of women and queers. Thought as an instrument of abstraction, gender is in fact a position without identity. An insight coming to us via queer studies from David Holtrin, sexualized in cultural practice. We can therefore never think the abstracting instrumentality of gender fully. This broad discussion of gender in the general sense invites us to realize that gender is not just another word for women, 
and that the non-place of the queer in the social division of labor is also contained within it. And yet, because gender, through the apparent immediacy to sexuality, is also thought to be the concrete as such, with commonly shared problems by women, the international civil society finds it easiest to enter the supplementing of globalization through gender. This is where translation which stamps the metapsychological circuits of renewal memory, the infant learning a language before entry into so-called reasonable life. The child invents a language, beginning by bestowing signification upon gender parts of the parents and bodies. The parents learn this language because they speak a named language. The child's language gets inserted into the named language with the history before the child's birth, which will continue after its death. As the child begins to navigate this language, it is beginning to access the entire interior network of the language, all its possibility of articulations, for which the best metaphor that can be found is, especially in the age of computers, memory. By comparison, cultural memory is a crude concept of narrative rememorization that attempts to privatize the historical record. Transforms, which it assaults, and which it incises. We have to inhabit the original language against its own grain in order to translate. Following these thinkers then, I come to the conclusion that the double bind of translation can best be welcomed in the world by teaching translation as an activism rather than merely the way to a convenience. In other words, while the translated work will of course make material somewhat imperfectly accessible to the general reading public, we ourselves in the academy primarily produce translators rather than translations. We are postscript, I made a promise, on proletarian and subaltern. The distinction was first made by Antonio Gramsci. As Frank Rosengarten, Gramsci's translator, pointed out in conversation in the army, that I should say that in Russian, the translation of my can the supporter speak is can the junior, junior officer speak. <laughs> so uh, Rosengarten pointed out, in the army, the definition of subaltern is those who take orders. As soon as we look at this category, rather than those who are trashed within and by the logic of capital, the proletarian, we think gender, we think the sans papier, the paperless, the undocumented, we think of those outside the system of equivalences, we think of those with no social mobility, who don't know that the welfare structures of the state are for the use of the citizen. I should tell you in closing that this final definition of the subaltern I wrote recently for a second cousin, deeply involved in local capitalism, who happened to see a video where women workers gently and with affection mocked me <coughs> for my fixation on the subaltern. My cousin didn't know what the word meant. It gives me pleasure to bring my family into these ceremonies I began with them, since my sister, Professor Maitre Chandra, who as an educator herself, who as an educator herself certainly knows of the predicament of the subaltern, has traveled all the way from New Delhi, so she's very jet-lagged, has traveled all the way from New Delhi to be present on this happy occasion when you welcome me into the university family. Thank you.